My name is Randy Barron, and I'm a dance artist, and I work in choreography with students. In my workshops and my classes, students work with science topics as the starting place to create dances. I work mostly with students in grades three through eight. Everything in the universe is moving. Science is the study of the universe, so we have a lot of material for dance right there. Everything is moving. And what I'm finding is then if I look at the elements of dance, and connect those to the big ideas in science that we're looking for, there are lots and lots of opportunities for movement to occur. And those are the footholds that students then use to create their own dances. When students are working on making their dances, they have to use the appropriate science vocabulary and the appropriate dance vocabulary as they're building them. And they also have to tie their work to the science concept so that the movement they're choosing is related specifically to that science idea. So for example, if, if students are creating a dance about the water cycle, they have to move appropriately for the solid, the liquid, and the gas forms of water and show the transitions in between. They might be working in a group to show different land forms and how water might move across the surface of the planet and how it's absorbed and how it's translated into the water cycle. So they are actually using those science concepts to create the dance movement, but without the science idea there, the dance movement would be neither as interesting nor as full is what they create. So they may involve themselves first of all in some improvisation in which they're exploring movement and creating new ideas, new movements. And then they're also building dances both individually as phrases and in small groups working together. So they also learn to present their dances and to explain their choices, to go back and look at, revise their work, and represent it after having made significant changes. Just like in any other process of composition, choreography is making up a dance so they're learning how to revise and edit and how to accept critical feedback and how to incorporate that feedback in their work. What I see happening with students is, first of all, they, they meet a challenge, which at first may seem a little daunting, but they meet that challenge and they actually do well. They do better than they thought they would. So they build self-confidence that comes from meeting a challenge as opposed to being told that you've done well, which is a big big opportunity. They also develop communication skills both within their groups as they work and then between groups as they talk about each other's work. And a sense of teamwork and camaraderie evolves both within the small groups and then within the classroom as a whole as we start to create a safe environment for creation and discussion of that creation. I also see that they learn the material more deeply. They remember it longer and they remember it more thoroughly because it's in their bodies as well as in their brains and they've had a chance to, to apply it experientially um, as well as to, to learn it intellectually. From a teacher's perspective, one of the most important things is engaging students in the, in the learning process and also getting them up and moving. We're finding with brain research that it is critical that children be moving their bodies in order for their brains to develop. So when we keep kids sitting down, we are disabling them. And this gives teachers a very clear set of uh, parameters and instructions on how to get kids moving without losing control of the class, which is often what they're concerned about. They also are going to be reaching different types of learners in different ways. This strategy allows for all learners to come to the table and be involved, so children who are more visual or who are more kinesthetic are equally engaged as children who are more verbal. And then we find that teachers also get a lot of enjoyment out of facilitating their students' creative process. It's just a great deal of fun to see what students make when you give them the tools and the opportunity to make it. So it leads to a lot of satisfaction and joy in the classroom, not just for the learners, but for the teacher who becomes one of the learners.